Well, this will be the last recording here. I, um, our family is moving from Alaska down to the lower 48 to start our new adventure. I had um, been meeting with some uh, old friends of mine and one of them, um, she, uh, oh, she knew me from my burrito making days. I'd make food and uh, people would come over and chat. It suited me well. So anyhow, she had asked me, um, like daily, how are you doing? And usually I'm like, great. Um, and then she came across me. She's like, how are you? And I was, I'm okay. And that was so shocking for her because I'm usually so chipper. <laughs> And that was the day I was diagnosed terminal. And in my mind was, how do I tell my children this? <laughs> and she asked, hi, how are you doing? And that ren rendered me to okay. I have a... Uh... <sighs> strong constitution. Michael was the best person to have in a 911. In your moment of panic, he's always steady. And that's something that my first strongest memory of him was of that. He was helping me get through a place blindfolded in turnout gear. <laughs> so anyhow, I was speaking to another friend of mine who knew me from that avenue, um, my EMS days. And she had spoken, um, she had a different journey <laughs> with me. She was there when Michael and I lost Xavier. And um, she helped me through that process in a lot of very touching, healing authentic ways <clears throat> and so anyways fast forward to now i get this construction crew postcard and i'm thinking of how i knew her before a bump in the road and it was and then to see her now and it just it made my heart so happy <laughs> and when i was speaking to her she's like every time i think of Michael and Avienda and Xavier, I cry. She goes, I don't know how not to think of what you went through and not cry. And I became glaringly aware <laughs> of uh, strength and understanding. My point of focus right now is what's best for my 11-year-old. My 11-year-old had a pretty bad moment tossed in her lap. So did her mother. And stitching together her laughter, her joy, is the most therapeutic thing for my heart. And those who um, have been helping stitch it together have been asking about what I need and my concerns and my needs and my process and all of that. When I was speaking to her and she goes, I can't not cry when I think about it. I thought about that time when her and I were sitting and I was telling her about Xavier and the parts that were more difficult and less difficult and, um, and how I um, walked through that situation and how it affected Michael and I and our children and our home and our everythings. So to my now, I, I lost a child who physically, technically wasn't 
technically mine, although my heart didn't know the difference. And when he left, parts of me, um, shut down and wouldn't let go. I was no longer open to children or EMS, two things I happen to be good at. Or I'm a good hand holder. <laughs> Michael and I, um, we worked the code over Xavier. And no matter how good you are at CPR, you can't stop acute pneumonia. <laughs> that had me focusing on the breath and the power of the breath and eight um, flow patterns, that kind of fun stuff. With Avienda, she was such a major blessing to Michael and I, um, especially because done is done and I was done with children. So birth control and all, she says, guess what? <laughs> Four months along before we knew that there was a viable baby. I was still having periods. Still, I, There was <sighs> a miracle in so many ways was she. I, uh, <sighs> our family, is learning who and what we are without their sounds with us. And that isn't accurate to who and what they are. Their presence is gone, but the love, the joy, the peace, the support, the uh, presence of them still very much active. <laughs> uh, losing my son, I kept hearing him cry. And I couldn't reach him at night. And then I cycled through this where I kept watching my children die over and over and over. I probably went on for about a year. Um, it took six years after Xavier is gone for me to leave the house on the day he passed over. It, I, I, <clears throat> Avienda, I could hear her laugh when I would get into move and flow. She was such a surprise upon our reality that Yeah, she, she'd smile, she'd laugh. She, she would meditate better than I would. I mean, it, it <laughs> not that, it, but it was like, how do you? She's like, she must be getting it from her anime. How does she know this stuff? Happy and joyous, vibrant, vivacious. Um, Avienda's spirit is loud and happy. <laughs> My friend talking about how, oh, there's a finch here visiting us. Oh, I don't know how to turn the video. So anyways, um, let's see if we could do it this way. Can you see the finch? Anyways, um, there you are. Anyways, the, uh, her saying and talking about how she couldn't think of it without crying made me think of the value. <laughs> so I don't mean for the distaste, but it's like I didn't lose one, I lost two. And I got to feel the difference of the grief pattern, the process, and a second finch just joined. <laughs> Anyways, um, there was processes with when I lost my son, that made it harder on me. Um, like I try and picture what he looked like at six, at seven, at eight, at nine. Avienda has that fades, it faded quicker 
I knew um, I wouldn't see her at nine. And I knew that that was okay. And I knew that was the mom in me recognizing, coming to awareness of. When you have a, a loss of a mother, a father, and a sibling in the immediate household, the whole house goes into a shift and the children, they lose both their parents. So it's a pretty uh, strong moment of upheaval. My daughter left me a note under my pillow about what she wanted and what she needed. And the universe opened up an avenue that allowed, that answered all of her needs. And that really, uh, I started calling it a super kiss. I don't believe in accidents, so car accident doesn't work. And uh, well, I guess crash works. Um, but that has so much negative emotional crash awareness onto the body that it isn't, I don't know how to say that without it hurting. So, I went with Subaru Kiss. Seeing the fact the first thing Michael ever did was drop a two by four over my head. Um, his skill at driving is what uh, was such a blessing for Sienna and I. The, uh, that comes with training. He's, well, now I'm the best driver, but he was the best driver in the family. And I'm glad that he got to be there with Avienda. I can hear her happy. And I know he's at peace, that he is peace. <laughs> I know that the love I have with Michael is the type where you can give birth and bury children, go through marriage, go through divorce, and be best friends throughout the whole journey with kindness and compassion and support throughout it. I grieve I grieve the things like the bubble baths, the moments. <clears throat> Keying in and remembering those moments help, help you move forward and move on. Our process together we kept getting healthier and healthier. <laughs> We knew how to encourage each other. That um, it's a gift. When you lose a child, a part of you shatters and it's not repairable. And, and what I mean by that is there won't be, well, in my moment of now where I'm stepping to, I get to meet my son-in-law. I get to say hello to the one that captured my daughter's heart that she's decided to walk her existence next to. I get to say hello to that special person. Those are moments that you don't receive um, once somebody's crossed over. And when they're your children, there are aches that you're somehow always aware of. Learning how to let go of some of those deeper things has been my... Uh, moment of now and I have put together different things that help. Uh, I've been connecting with an online psychic I think almost a year now. Um, her name is Abby Normal and I've enjoyed that. She offers a good time and I'm like okay let me throw a snarl in your lap. <laughs> And then it was funny how her channel leads 
mirrored and matched and honored what I was going through and understood my moments of now and um, cause and effect of business. It was steady, connected, and consistent. That kind of energy helps for healing. When um, when we learn how to settle into our new, it's important that we don't take the things with us that doesn't serve. There are ways, I've, <laughs> one of the things that I, when my kids were little, I would do, I would just stare and interact with, they were the everything. I loved it. And I always felt like I was supposed to be doing something else. Like I really should be cleaning. I should have this, I should have that. The should haves, those have faded. The, the looking back at the photos, at the pictures, at the videos, at the, the moments. Facebook, oh my goodness, that, that had been a hilarious journey of, of seeing what we are like and what I was posting two, three, four, five years. And, and, and looking at them and knowing that's the year that this, that's the moment that that, that's the shift of this. Our healing process. There are ways that I felt Michael uh, didn't arrive with Xavier, didn't arrive for me in ways that I needed, and he felt similar. And it was an uh, uncomfortable thing between us. <laughs> like, I really should have, and I'm like, yeah, you really should have. <laughs> He showed up in all the ways and that in the ways that I couldn't see there he showed up here our love when someone is going to cross over I think we mourn that moment before it arrives like like we're aware of it our brain may not have cognitive linear dilation to this is what's happening or it might, but your heart, your heart center, it knows. There were so much key insights that I didn't see until hindsight, but mirrored and made sense in alignment. I would look at Avienda and I would wonder, how's this going to work? How's it going to happen? Because I didn't always, I couldn't see her. It was like I couldn't see what our future was going to be. Man, it makes more sense now. I thought, silly me, I thought it'd be my autoimmune or something like that. Um, I didn't realize it'd be her sound going. Um, I'm gonna put on music and clean and be quiet for a while. I don't know if I'll post it or not, to be honest. But, regardless, look at this. Ah, uh, before I was here, I was in Okinawa, Japan. I loved the cherry blossom trees. <sighs> this is my children's home. So much laughter and joy and fun and merriment and Whatever it is that they, I was studying things like 
sensory processing disorders and autism and quantum science. All sorts of just seem so unrelated. I would, they were my hobbies. And now I'm living a reality where I could take my hobbies and bring them forefront and follow my daughter's laughter. I've had six children, now it's me and one. I've never actually had such a simple assignment. <laughs> Not that children are assignments, but they're a joy that you only get brief moments with. And they constantly evolve and change. Um, it's one of the things I liked. All my kids are so individually to themselves. Unique creatures. <sighs> Anyhow, signing off.